What's up everyone? In today's video, we're going to create a design for one of the most iconic brands and companies of all time, Harley Davidson. Let's go. What's up everyone? So first of all, thank you to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribed. Um, this has been a pretty cool week for me because the channel actually just hit 10,000 subscribers. Um, I'm totally blown away by that. Um, I'm so appreciative of it. It's crazy to me. Like I remember when I was first starting off, like I went to this one dude and um, he had, he still has, his name's Keywave, I'll shout him out. He's from my hometown. He has like 30,000 subscribers and I told him I had a YouTube channel and he was like, oh cool, let me check it out. And I was like, yeah, I have nine subscribers. And he was really nice about it. He subscribed right away. And um, I just remember that moment because I was like, man, this is like, like this dude has done it. Like I know I can do it. You know, at that time I was shooting videos on my phone. I had no lighting. I had no equipment really to speak of whatsoever. Um, but I was just putting out content because it was fun and like it still is like I'm still loving Making these videos for you guys, and I'm so grateful that you're here So I just wanted to take a minute and like thank you guys sincerely um, Because it really does mean so much that you guys have like been with me on this journey So thank you so a ton of you have commented that you wanted to see a Harley Davidson design tutorial So that's what we're gonna do today um, I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of different like new techniques that I haven't used in any other videos, so it should be pretty cool. Um, obviously, I don't have to tell you guys about Harley Davidson. They're an iconic brand. Their logo is, you know, one of the most recognized logos probably on the planet. Harley Davidson, you know, they've just put out so many like dope graphics. They're, in my opinion, they're like the definition of the word timeless as it applies to t-shirt designs. Um, Cause you know, you could be like, in like the 70s, you're like the cool guy at the bar, like in your Harley sleeveless shirt. Or like in 2020, you're like, you could also be the cool chick, like chick at the bar wearing the Harley shirt, you know, or you're like the girl on Instagram. Like, so I just feel like Harley Davidson has reached so many like walks of life that like, they're the type of brand that like, will just probably be around forever. So without further delay, let's just jump into my computer so I can show you guys what I have going on. So first things first, I put together this like mini sort of mood board to sort of just like show you guys um, what Harley tends to do with their graphics. Like obviously I like hand picked these particular designs, um, but really for the most part, like in their general branding, they use like eagles all the fucking time. Like, um, it's a big part of their vibe, you know? Um, there's always like an eagle or like, yeah, like stars. Obviously, motorcycles is a pretty big <laughs> aspect of their uh, design, uh, teacher designs. So yeah, I just threw this together. This is more or less to show you guys like colors and like styling, right? So like you see a lot of like golds and obviously this like safety orange that they use in their logo is um, implemented in a lot of their graphics. Um, some of these go back to like the 60s, some of them are more modern, um, but I tried to pull like a range of different styles as well. So I'll show you guys what I came up with based on this mood board. This is what I've got. Um, I wanted to do something, you know, I'm, you guys already know I'm not like an illustrator, so like doing something like, you know, this or this was not gonna be an option for me. Um, but that's like one thing I try to actually lean into on this channel is just like showing you guys that you don't even necessarily have to be an illustrator because I'm not one and I seem to do okay. So, so we are going to reconstruct this design from scratch. I'm going to show you guys step by step how I did all this stuff. And one thing that's really cool about this design is it's like down to the pixel basically. Like you can DTG this. It's, you can have a transparent background. I know that's something a lot of you guys struggle with, so I really want to make a tutorial showing you guys how you can create these graphics and still have them be like DTG friendly. So um, let's just start reconstructing this design here. So first of all, let's jump over to our favorite copyright free image resource, pexels.com. 
Uh, not sponsored by Pe Pexels in any way. Still waiting on that check from them. Shout them out in every video. It's cool. So I just searched for Eagle and you know, there's tons of badass photos to pick from, I'll be quite honest. Um, fucking screeching eagle here, lots of flying eagles. This eagle looking like he's up to something. I don't know what that dude is about. Um, but I ended up landing on this one. So this one I liked because the background is like almost black already. So I knew that since it was going on a black shirt, I wouldn't necessarily have to like cut out the image which is always nice because that's a pain in the ass. So, you know, we're not gonna be cutting out any images in this video. I hope you guys are cool with that. I'm always trying to like find ways to like speed things up for you guys. Like, you know, you won't always be able to do this, but it's something you can be on the lookout for. I'll tell you that much. So, um, first thing we're gonna do is Command A, grab this whole image, Command C to copy it, go back over into our design and, um, we'll command V to paste it in. So first let's just convert it to a smart object. And I'm gonna make it a little bit transparent so I can see how I sized it on this um, graphic we're trying to replicate here. Dude, and I finally figured out why my computer does this like whirring sort of like buzzing sound. Bro, it's, it's only when I'm screen recording. So my computer just like doesn't like when I do that. So I'm just letting you guys know, just keeping you guys up to date because I know everyone was having a hard time sleeping at night, wondering what was going on with my computer. So there you go. All right. So we pretty much got this size correctly. That looks good. All right, so let's just get rid of that for now. Um, so the technique that I used on this, which I don't think I've used in any other video, I may or may not have, I can't remember, but uh, it's a stamp technique. So check this out. Uh, first, set your foreground color over on the left to black and set the background color to white. That's important when you're using like the filter gallery, um, at least using the sketch section because it takes on whatever colors are in your palette over there. So, yep, yeah, and there goes my computer making that sound, love it. So we wanna mess with the light and dark balance and basically just get it to a point where, you know, that background is, is gone. We're, we still have like the details. I generally don't mess with smoothing. Like basically how it works is the smoother you make it, the more details you lose and it just, you know, it begins to make it look like more like chunky, if that makes sense. Um, so I like nine times out of 10, keep the smoothness at one. But you just wanna like mess with this bright, uh, sorry, light and dark balance until you get it to a place where it's like, you know, you've got most of the details there, um, but it's not like crazy. Like if we go all the way over, it starts to get like ridiculous. So you just wanna strike like a nice balance. And I especially want to make sure the eye like looks good because that's like a pretty clutch part of this uh, graphic, right? All right, that looks pretty good. So what are we at, 15? So let's just go with that. All right, so the next thing I did is actually just like got rid of this extra shit on here. And I literally just used the polygonal lasso tool and just went in and like cut it out like by hand. So just basically cut around I found this to be easier than using like the eraser tool just because I can like kind of follow the eagle and just kind of get rid of all this stuff at once. I'll show you here in a second. Just kind of cutting around, get rid of this stuff that we don't need. hitting delete. Oh, cause it's a smart object. We can't, oh, I'm an idiot. Okay. Duplicate the layer so we can go back to it if we need to. And then I'm going to, I could also just like put black over it if I wanted to keep it a smart object and one layer, but uh, whatever, I'll just do this. It's fine. Rasterize the layer, then hit delete. 
Um, looks like I want to get rid of this too. Boom, delete. All right, so now we've got like our badass eagle head. So right now we're just gonna make this like white basically. Well, like a, like a light gray color because that's like more vintage looking. It looks a little bit more like it was printed in white but then like worn, you know, a billion times and now the, like the white is a gray color, you know. So I'm gonna use the magic wand tool, make sure that anti-alias and contiguous at the top are not checked. And then I'm just gonna click on this like white and do command J and throw it to the top. So now we've just got a white layer, right? So we've got our eagle head. Um, I'm gonna turn it to this like light gray color that I've got over here. I made like these swatches um, from the other design just so I can easily access them. There's this whole thing at the top, but like I just like to have these big swatches here. Um, and again, how to do this is you just hit this little plus sign and that will add whatever swatches to your little swatch thing here and you can save this out too. Um, all right, so this is like our base color, right? Like this light gray. But if you noticed in the original design, and I'll get rid of this texture so you can see it better. There's also like these other details, like these are some nice highlights here on the beak. Um, and then there's some low lights in the feathers. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that real quick. Check this out. So we are going to duplicate our original graphic that we we're messing around with. Um, go back to our main, or our, our original photo rather. And um, I'm actually just gonna use bright um, threshold rather than the stamp effect because we'll be able to control it a lot more. Um, but that's what we're gonna use to add in these low lights. So go up to image, adjustments, threshold. And we're basically just gonna want like, we're gonna wanna see like some black in the feathers, right? Cause those are low lights. So those are gonna become our low lights. So we don't wanna overdo it. We just want a little bit to add like some dimension to it, you know, like some realism to it also. So, all right, so we've got that. Again, using our magic wand tool, again with anti-alias and contiguous not checked, just click the black and then same thing, command J and throw it to the top. So now what I like to do is lower the opacity. So then you can get like those low lights in there. And I think on the other one I had it at like 20, maybe 25, yeah, I think 25. So that'll basically give you like, like I said, more dimension. And then as we add the color in here, that's gonna, um, you know, bring things like to the next level as well. So now we've got this layer of black that we brought the opacity down to 25% on. Um, what I like to do then is create a clipping mask with this white layer. So like, you know, cause right now it's just gonna be in this like weird box and it's gonna probably fuck things up later. So if you just right click on it and do create clipping mask, that'll just like attach it or, or clip it if you will. <laughs> I'm a dumbass sometimes. Um, uh, it'll clip it to this layer that we have like this um, light gray color on, right? So let's look at our other design and see what else we did. So yeah, it looks like we used way less low lights in this original one, which is totally fine. Um, but we used highlights on this beak part, but I don't wanna do that until I have this yellow color in here. So let's just get into that. So doing the yellow color, I basically just created a new layer above, let's just name this while we're at it, light gray, call this low lights. So I added a new layer above this light gray. Just go up to layer, new. You can also just click this little plus thing here. I end up doing both sometimes, but whatever. Um, and then I just used this gold color and a uh, paintbrush and just literally like painted on the beak, you know? Nothing too, um, you know, complicated about that. And one thing that I found that I find in general is pretty helpful when you're doing this is um, if you look at the original image um, 
and just make it like transparent because sometimes it's like hard to tell like where this color would naturally go to if you're just like trying to guess like does it go to here or is it up over here or where, where does it so if you just turn on this original image and bring down the opacity you can kind of follow like where that color actually goes right so let's just do that i'm basically just going to paint this in here just like this beaks are so cool man look at this shit Imagine having that on your face, like all the shit, different shit you could do with that, bro. You could fuck some shit up with a beak like that. These are the kind of things that I think about while I'm designing, by the way. Wouldn't it be badass to have a beak? It's like, <laughs> all right. All right, let's just double check because I think I went a little crazy over here, yeah. Reel it in a little bit here. Just using the eraser tool and just like getting rid of some of this. So that's pretty close. And then you can see there's also like some around the eye too, so I added that in. Just a little bit, you know. And then I think I just actually made the eye uh, yellow too, if I'm not mistaken. But then I left like a little like um, glare here, or the flare, rather, not glare. Glare? Flare? Is it a flare? Is it a glare and a flare? I don't know. All right, so, yeah, bro, that'll probably do it. <clears throat> okay. So, we've got our beak, like, colored in, and like I said, we're gonna add some um, highlights to it, right? So, I don't like this, sorry. I'm gonna get rid of that. And I don't like that. All right. Okay, so to add those highlights on the beak, we basically just do like the reverse of what we did before to add these low lights. So we can go back up to our original image and the threshold is still on. Um, but let's turn the opacity to 100 and just keep messing with the threshold. But now we wanna look at the beak and try to get some um, some of the highlights. So we're looking at the white now instead of the black, right? So just look, I don't want it to be too much. I just want it to be like a little bit of extra like um, detail, you know? So that's pretty good there. So same thing, magic wand tool, click the white this time, command J, throw it to the top, and then we're gonna bring it down and create a clipping mask with everything else. And then you can see like there's there's um, white over here as well. You can leave that if you want. To me, I didn't like how it looked. I thought it was a little weird. So I just erased it out. Um, you know, I don't know, man. It looks okay, but I just, for my taste, I didn't like it. And, and I'm the one designing this shit, so fuck you. <laughs> All right, so uh, I can't remember, did I leave it totally white? Let's check. Let's just group all this shit so we can move a little slicker here. I'm gonna close this. Um, oh, I actually did it gray. Yeah, duh, man. All right, so let's do that. So you can just double click that highlight layer that we created, color overlay, gray. It's already good to go. And there, we've got our little highlights and lowlights, right? So. It's looking more, you know, it doesn't look like an illustration, but it, it doesn't look like a photo either. So, I mean, this is kind of what I was saying earlier. Like, it's just these little like techniques that can help you like overcome the fact that you may not be an illustrator. So what's next? What should we do next? We've got our eagle in here. Let's get this text going, right? So when I do like that curve, that it's not curved, it's like going along a circle. It's uh, I don't know how to explain it. All right, so, but what I do is go over to the ellipse tool over here on the left, and I just make a black circle, and we'll just do it as like our bottom layer. Make a black circle, and we're going to use the um, type tool, horizontal type tool. So when you've made your circle, if you like move the mouse over it, right when it hits the edge, you'll see that little like wavy line. As soon as you see that, just click your mouse and then you'll have text that actually goes 
around the circle. It's like a type on a path type of situation. It's just like following the edge of the circle all the way around, like click it, you know, command A, get rid of everything and start typing out your text. And I'll, I'll link to this particular font below. Essentially like my mindset for like anything vintage, like Harley Davidson esque, like even like American Thunder esque, um, it would, it would be like probably your first instinct to go to like maybe the Western category on font to look for stuff like this. But in my opinion, like you'll have much better luck if you just look under um, serif fonts and just try to find something that's like, you know, a little bit like chunky. You don't want anything that's like too like clean and classy for this kind of stuff. Like if you look at the mood board, like everything is pretty like kind of thick, you know what I mean? So, so you wanna make sure that you have show transform controls clicked up here at the top. Otherwise you won't have this box and then you won't be able to like see this little rotate icon up here in the top right corner that will allow you to like play with this text and get it so that essentially, you know, you want the bottom to line up, right? So here we can see it's a little bit off yet. Just rotate it back to the left until we get these two to line up or to be super close. Like they don't need to be exactly perfect, but they should be pretty damn close, you know? So it's looking a little better. We need to adjust the kerning on these letters anyway, so that's gonna shift where this sits. So let's just do that now. Um, see the huge gap in the A and the V, we wanna fix that. So we can just highlight this A and go over here to our like kerning box. And I'll just like change this to I don't know, negative 75, sure. So I think like purists, like font purists would probably probably be very against this just because there is a reason that there's that much space between the A and the V, um, but to me it looks weird. So <laughs> I like to change shit when it just doesn't look right to me, um, whether or not it's against like the design gods or whatever. Um, so that looks better for sure. I think we can still tighten some of this up a little bit more. And this one, let's go to 50. Okay, cool. So yeah, that looks good. So let's see where these are sitting. Pretty close. We're just gonna go a little bit more to the left and that should do it. Damn, I cannot get this. All right, go. There we go, okay, so you see they're both lined up there. Okay, cool. So, the text is pretty much set up. Um, let's see what else we can do here, looking at this other design. So, first I wanna make sure that the text is actually like right on, um, with this. It's actually not. Why is it not? It's like not as big. So let's make it bigger. And so that actually comes down to the circle not being big enough or something. There we go, okay. So I just had to increase the size of the font a bit. All right, so again, it doesn't need to be exactly the same, um, but I just want it to be like pretty close so I can truly recreate what we did before as closely as possible. So the text is cool. Um, I didn't add this black low light until the very end, so that's what we're gonna do again here. Um, but we can add the strokes on the text um, right away. So I believe what I did was a you know, a black stroke around the outside. Let's try like 15. I'm just gonna change the color to red so I can see what I'm doing. Um, so it's definitely more than 15. Let's try like 30. It was definitely less than 30. 25, that looks like could be it. And then I'm gonna click this little plus next to the stroke um, and create another one. And then underneath, that's where our orange is gonna go. So 
and change the color to this orange that we already have in our swatches and then do 50. So it was definitely less than 50, 35. Definitely looks better, it might have been 45. No, I think it might have been 35. All right, we're going with 35. All right, so let's see how close we got. Pretty close. All right, we're gonna go with this. All right, so the text is done, the eagle is done. What is next? Um, we can add in this Harley logo, which is not gonna be something very, that's very difficult. I think I just went to Google. I searched Harley Davidson logo PNG and this was the first black and white option I found. And this is something I wanna to cover too. So a lot of you guys have DM me and you're like Fuller, when I you know, copy an image or pull an image into, into Photoshop that is a PNG, it looks like this, which you know, this is not a PNG because you can see there's like this checkered background that is meant to look like what it would look like if it were a PNG, right? So basically, depending on what the image is, you just need to like go back to the website and actually click like this logo, or not this logo, this link here, and then go to this website and there should be a proper download button. But essentially, these websites make it look like it's a PNG, um, but it's not. And that's basically, I think, so you'll go to their website and then they can actually show ads on there and get some revenue, right? Or like make money. So, um, but what I'm gonna do with this is just like use the magic wand tool and I'm gonna make sure actually anti-alias is clicked and I'm just gonna click on the black because I know that that's just gonna like pull, pull it out just fine. So this is like an instance where this particular method works. It's generally not gonna work. Like, you know, obviously it was, if it was like a full color image, this wouldn't work, but um, whatever. I just, hap I just happen to know that that's a technique that would work. So we're gonna change the color on this to orange. And then I'm gonna create it, uh, create a smart object out of it because I think I'm gonna be sizing it down a little bit. All right, starting to come together, looking real good. All right, man, so let's just get that positioned kind of right there. And this was kind of just like a style choice too because I noticed this like gap here where like, you know, I could probably add like some text or something, but I thought like just throwing the logo in there would look better and it would fill that space nicely. It would round everything out. So that was why I did that. Um, let's take a look. Let's actually get this icon or this logo into our group. Okay. Oh, it wasn't orange, bro. It was yellow, bro. You gotta change that shit. Damn, that was a close call. It was way smaller too. See man, this is why, you know, you're not gonna make the same choice yesterday as you did today necessarily, right? So, all right. And one thing I noticed when I was zoomed in before is there's low lights on these, on this uh, eye. So I'm gonna get rid of those and just use the eraser tool because I want this to be like that nice gold color. Yeah, bro, everything else is fine. <clears throat> so as of now, in this design, we're looking at a one, one, two, three, four, five color design. And I think with the lightning, it ends up being a six color design total. So not too crazy. You could definitely get that number down by just like removing the low lights or something like that. But um, that was another like goal that I wanted to um, achieve with this video is like showing you guys something that doesn't necessarily use a ton of colors to, you know, if you wanted to screen print it, you could very easily do that. So let's see what we want to add next. So we've got the eagle, we've got the text with the logo. Let's just add this California text in here. So real simple, I believe I used Euro, Euro style, Euro style and I use extended and you know, these are just fonts that I have in my library. Um, if you wanted to find this Euro style font, um, 
it's as easy as going to Google, search for Euro style. You can probably find like some weird, like, you know, Russian website or something. Dude, low key, Russian websites for some reason have like the dopest fonts. I always find myself on like some like Russian website. It's amazing. So like shout out to Russia for sure. So let's make sure this California, Texas like lined up. It's way too big right now. Come on, bro. Uh, pardon me. All right. And the spacing, I think I made it pretty big, like a thousand. No, not a hundred, bro, a thousand. Come on, bro. Bro, really? Three zeros. All right, that's not doing it. Let's just, here I'm using, um, I'm just like using the mouse on this. If you just like move your finger up or down when this is highlighted, you can just do it that way too. And that'll like increase and decrease it. it seems a little smarter to do here. All right. That's pretty close. I want it to be exact because I've got just enough OCD, 1100. Oh, bro, was it? It was 1200? I mean, pretty much. All right, yeah, it was, it was 1200. See, I knew it, man. All right, so we've got our California text. Let's just make sure this is centered. Um, in case you guys don't know, you can always go up to view, show, and smart guides and make sure that's clicked, or that's checked rather, so you can get these like little purple guides to help you out. So I want it lined up with this eagle. All right, so it's coming together. Um, from here, we basically have like the lightning to add and the texture and that will do it. So let's take a look at the design um, and just add this lightning in, right? So I think to add the lightning, what I did actually was first I created a stroke around this entire design, um, a stroke of um, black. I'm just changing it to red so I can see. Uh, actually, that's not what I did. So here, let's duplicate this group and let's just grab all the colors out of it. So we can, so to do this, this is like a, almost like a color separation thing that you can do too when you're done with your design. Um, as long as it's like down to the pixel like we've been doing here, you can use the magic wand tool, make sure anti-alias and contiguous are not checked, and then you can just start clicking on the separate colors and then do command J and just start throwing them to the top. So clicking the yellow, clicking the orange, um, clicking this like dark kind of gold color, clicking the grays, the dark grays rather, and that's it. So now we've got basically, oh shit, that's not it, sorry. What are we missing? Why is this a different color? All right, so the California text ended up being a different color, but it's supposed to be this gray color here. So let's get that changed. All right, cool. So, and I'm just gonna, make sure these two gray colors are merged, merge those layers together. So now we have like our colors separated out basically, right? So from here, what I did is grouped all these colors together, command G with all of them highlighted, right? That's how we group things. And then that's when I added like the stroke. So now there we go. All right, I think I did 25. Yeah, let's just go 25. Change it to black. And then I created a new layer and I used this um, gray color and literally just like drew in the lightning by hand. So, and I think I'm now seeing like why that Harley Davidson's different in the original ones. Cause wait, 
maybe not. Yeah, I adjusted the spacing a little bit, but all right. So if it's cool with you guys, I'm going to just draw over the lightning that I had originally, just like, cause I like the way that I did it. So um, let's create a new layer. We're just gonna hit the plus over here to do that this time. And you can use a brush that's, yeah, like 20 pixels. Make sure you've got this gray color selected um, down here in your swatches. And then um, what I like to do, and let's get rid of this for now, um, is, you know, you can start drawing it out a little bit, but I'll add like the glow to it right away, just cause that like helps me kind of see what the end result is gonna look like a little bit easier. So just double click that new layer you've created and then just go to outer glow. And let's see, I've got the opacity at 100. I've got this blue color um, for the outer glow. The spread is at 10, size, probably a little bit, uh, yeah, 43, sure. Range zero, jitter zero. Um, and we'll just like start drawing this lightning in now that this glow is on here, so. We're just drawing it in. And, um, you know, just like draw whatever you think looks cool. Uh, you know, I don't know, when's the last time you like looked at lightning and you were like, oh, that looks weird. That doesn't look like, that bolt doesn't look like it should go like that. You know what I mean? Like lightning is all, is totally random. And so you can kind of be as well. As long as you don't go like all weird with it. And like, this is not lightning anymore. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure, I'm gonna have to edit this a little bit because our text is not exactly the same as it is um, in our new design as it is on the old one. That's cool. I just like the overall like layout and like shape and like placement that I had originally, so I didn't want to like fuck around until I got it close. All right, so we've got our lightning and like it looks cool, um, but what I like to do is just make sure like the ends are like pointed because they look kind of silly when they're like rounded like that. So I'll just literally go in and just like make them pointed using the eraser tool, like with the hard, um, with the hardness up to a hundred percent and just sort of like, you know, again, doesn't need to be like absolutely perfect. It's lightning, but you know, try to make it look as good as you can, you know? Just gonna do that to all these sort of like um, ends, all the ends of the lightning where you can see see it, you know. And then after this, I'm gonna show you guys how to. Um, Basically take this outer glow and make it so it's like down to the pixel. Um, the same way like this is, you know, when like you zoom in, sometimes you, got, you guys have asked what I mean by down to the pixel. So like when you zoom in, like here I'm at 700% and you can see like the actual like ridges and like pixels. But if you look at this outer glow, you can't see that, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna show you guys how to achieve that same sort of effect with this glow. So for one, it'll be, it will be easier to print as far as I know. If someone out there is a printer and like there's no issue with it like this, I guess let me know. But I think even, even just making it down to the pixel for the sake of cohesiveness with the design is like smart. So, all right. So we fixed the ends of all the lightning bolts, right? So from here, I'm gonna show you guys how you can, how you can um, like I said, make it like down to the pixel. So the first thing we wanna do is duplicate the lightning layer. So I'll just hit Command J with that lightning layer highlighted. And the top layer, we can just turn off the outer glow. Um, the bottom layer, we're gonna turn the fill down to zero, okay? Then go to the background uh, layer, highlight it, hit Command J to duplicate it and then bring it up underneath the glow layer here. And then we're going to, with uh, background copy highlighted, hold down shift and select 
the glow layer and then right click and do, um, not create clipping mask, Jesus. Merge layers, all right? So now we've just got the um, outer glow on its own layer. So we're gonna zoom in here so we can see what we're doing. Go up to um, filter, noise, add noise. And you can add like a pretty decent amount. Um, in this case, I've got it at 25%, which is like perfect. So for the sake of easy math, let's just use that. 25% noise, and then go up to image adjustments threshold. And you can just like eyeball this and like, you know, you can, you don't want, want it like that obviously, but basically you just want to keep it so that you can only see the white for the, um, the outer glow of the lightning, right? So I want it to be, I want it to be like pretty heavy. So we're going to go to, let's just go to 69. What's up? I'm in my 30s. So um, we're gonna click the black uh, with the magic wand tool. Make sure contiguous and anti-alias are not checked. Click the black, hit delete. So now we've just got this white, like outer glow, right? So now we're gonna double click on that layer and we're gonna change it to blue. Got our blue over here. Okay, so now we've got our glow going. It's a little bit hard to see, right? So the next thing I'm gonna do is go up to this bolt layer, that's like our white bolt, double click it, and I'm gonna add a stroke to, to the inside actually. Just a little stroke that's gonna separate the blue from the light gray, and it's gonna thin out the bolt and just like make it look a little more badass. All right, maybe a little less, three, that's cool. And this again should be like technically easier to print because there is like separation. It's small, you know, it's a small separation, but there's separation between those colors. As far as I know, that's helpful. Let's actually see what it looks like with a center stroke too. Now we're just experimenting. Actually, I think I'm gonna do that. All right, forget what I said. We're going with a center stroke. So center stroke of, let's go with six. Uh, yeah, six, seven, seven. All right. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm good with that. So one thing I'm noticing on this bolt is that it's a little bit fuzzy here and that's probably fine, but we can fix that. So go to the background layer, command J, bring it up underneath the bolt layer. And then we're going to merge those two layers together and just do image threshold, and that's gonna get it down to the pixel again. All right, use our wand, select the white, command J, throw it to the top, and now we can add our stroke back in. And yeah, that's a little better. It kind of still does it, you know, but it does look better. All right, so that's just like a small detail that I just noticed probably wasn't even necessary to fix, but why not fix it since we were right there? So, man, we are like, I mean, this is 95, 96% done, right? So from here, we just wanna add our texture in. So um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So we've got our textures here. Um, this is from the 15 Vintage Textures Volume 1 that's available at fullermode.com. That's the only like tool I'm gonna be using from the site today. Um, so we can just drag this into Photoshop and we'll do Command A to grab the whole thing, Command C to copy, back over into our canvas. And we're going to grab all of this now, group it together. We've got like two, three groups going on now, which is a little bit sloppy. I'm gonna admit that, but whatever. You can always go back and fix that stuff later. So we've got our new group here, and we are going to go down and see this little folder with the circle. That's our layer mask. So we're gonna click that and add a layer mask. And now remember, we've got our texture copied. So we can just click this little thumbnail here while holding the option key. And that's gonna take us inside the layer mask. And that's where we paste the texture. So Command V is gonna paste in the texture. Click this thumbnail here again 
while holding Option. And now we're out of the layer mask. We've got our texture in here. And um, we can mess with like the brightness and contrast of it if we want. So adjustments, brightness and contrast. I think I took up the brightness a little bit. I brought down, oops, make sure use legacy is checked. Brought up the brightness a little bit. Contrast a little bit. I just wanted to have like a subtle sort of vintage look to it, but I didn't want it to be too much. So that's pretty good. So we are like 99% done. Now we can add that little bit of extra sauce and put the low lights on this text, right? So check this out. To do that, we're gonna grab our gold text here, or our gold uh, layer rather, sorry. And um, I'm just going to, using the magic wand tool, just grab these letters. Make sure contiguous is checked up here. So grab all the letters, click inside them to make sure they're all like highlighted like that. And then I'm gonna hit Command J, and that's gonna throw it to the top. So now we just have this like text layer to work with. So like, you know, whatever, if you want to mess around and like try different colors on it, like that actually looks pretty fucking cool. Um, yo, did I just change this whole design? Are we using blue now? Bro, we might have to use blue, that looks pretty good. Fuck, all right, we're just gonna leave it yellow for now, but all right. So, in order to add that low light in, first I'm gonna um, make a new layer above this gold text, and then I'm going to right away, right click on it, and do create clipping mask. And from here, I'm going to use the brush tool and bring the hardness down to zero and the size, eh, that's probably cool. Let's just call it 350. Again, love that easy math shit. And I'm just gonna draw in the low lights cause it's like curved. So it's gonna, you can't just use like a gradient, right? So if you just like draw it in and we don't want white shit, we want black. If you just like draw it in, that. And one thing that might be helpful too is on this gold text layer, if you duplicate it, Command J, bring it to the top, putting our clipping mask back in, double click it, change the fill opacity to zero, and then add an inner stroke of that gold color. Right, so that's how we get like that. Actually, maybe a center stroke. Oh shit, got that update or that, got that, uh, I got a weird Chrome notification from represent, which is kind of weird. I remember signing up for that shit, that's cool. So yeah, center stroke actually is what I ended up doing at 15, right, 15 pixels. 15 pixels, cool. Yeah, so now we have like the same thing going on that we did with the lightning. So in order to fix that, we know what to do, right? Go to the background, command J, bring it up um, underneath our, just our text layer. And we are actually going to make it yellow, believe it or not. So this will make sense in a second. So now all that's showing is the black, right? And that's really all that we want because that's like our low lights. So we can um, merge these three layers together but leave this stroke layer here because we're gonna want that in, in there still. And merge these layers. Same thing we, we did with the lightning, add noise. 25, sure and image adjustments threshold. And now we've got our like pixelated um, gradient. Okay. That's cool. Get out of here. Make sure contiguous is not clicked at the top or checked at the top. Use the magic wand tool, click the white, delete. Boom, we've got our gradient in here. Whoops, I accidentally deleted it. It's down to the pixel again, see? So all this shit is like down to the pixel, which is dope. 
So that is it for this video. Hopefully you guys will be able to, you know, apply some of these techniques that I used in this video to your next vintage design. Certainly don't feel like limited to the Harley Davidson theme. This could work for whatever you want to do, like a badass truck stop wolf shirt. You want to do like a 60s, 70s, 80s band t-shirt. Like the point of like, you like me doing all these different techniques is so that you guys can apply them to like whatever you're doing right so like there's going to be instances where you know the thresholding and noise thing is going to come in handy and like other instances where like you'll be able to use like the layer mask and like you know it, the list goes on and on so like hopefully you know with any luck if you've watched enough of these videos you'll start to develop this like memory of like oh yeah i remember when fuller did this in this video let me try it here and that sort of thing like that's the goal that's just like that's being a designer man like after a while you just develop this like toolkit that you can go to and pick different things from depending on the job so that's the goal if you could hit that subscribe button that would really mean a lot to me um i think we're still at this place where like 60 or 70 percent of people who have watched my videos are not subscribed which, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit hurt by that. You know, maybe people are not into subscribing or something, I don't know what it is, but like, if you like this video, the chances are pretty good you're gonna like something else I've already put out and probably something I put out in the future, so just subscribe now. Also, be sure to leave a comment below. Um, like I said earlier, the reason I did this video is because so many of you commented that you wanted to see it. I'm also replying to everyone like as soon as possible. Um, you know, so it's a good place to ask questions. Um, if there's anything in this video that you are unclear about, I can probably help you out there. Um, but another thing you can do is just like DM me and follow me on Instagram. Um, it's at fuller.moe. Give me a follow over there. Um, I always love hearing from you guys. If you want to send me your designs, you need like some critiques or you need some you know, freelance design advice, whatever it may be. You know, I'm always around and uh, I'm happy to hear from you guys. So that is it for today. I hope everyone is continuing to stay safe, stay at home, work on your Photoshop stuff, get your skills up, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.